And so we look at question number three from the May June 2025 exam. Let's go right into it. They say ball is dropped from point A and reaches point B, right, which is age meters below point A in time T. All right, so note that they say that the time that it takes between A and B is time T. Right, they say a ball, or the ball rather, takes two seconds to fall from point B to point C. Right, so that's two seconds, right, which is on the ground. The distance between point C, uh, between B to C is H, 8 H meters. So there is the distance given there. They say see the diagram below and ignore the effects of air friction. Now, please note, ladies and gents, the moment that we look at air friction, they're simply telling us that uh, uh, they say ignore uh, air friction, then it means that we are in free fall. What does that mean? It means that gravity is the only force. Gravitational force is the only force that is acting on this object, right? So they say define the term free fall, right? This is motion of an object due to gravitational force only, all right, and only being the operative word there. So they say show by means of a calculation that the time t is equal to one second. All right, so I had an approach on this question. Uh, I thought about getting uh, information between A to B. Now, I want you to think about it. We've got initial velocity, right? They said to us the ball is dropped, so suggesting that our initial velocity will be zero, right? And then we've got, well, we don't have the final velocity. That is the velocity when it got to B. That's unknown. But gravitational acceleration, I'm going to take downwards as positive, guys. So that in this case, for every single one of my calculation, gravitational acceleration will be taken as positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time that it takes, they said, that's time t. And the displacement, right, the change in position in a straight line is positive h meters, which is going downwards. Now let's get an expression for this. What don't we have? We don't have final velocity. And which is the only equation without final velocity? Well, it says delta y, that's vi delta t plus 1 over 2 times a delta t squared. And nothing wrong for those of you who prefer the traditional uh, um, you know, equation, s is equal to ut plus half a t squared, right? That's exactly the same thing, right? So displacement is h. Initial velocity is zero, making that entire term zero, plus a half times 9.8 times t squared. So h is actually 4.9 t squared. Right, that is our equation number one. And so that is how we are going to express it. So I call it equation one because we've got two things that are unknown there, which is h as well as t. Right, so we need to find a way to have another equation. And I thought to myself, look, the problem with looking at B to C is that I don't have both initial velocity and final velocity. So the best way to look at it, how about I look from A till the ground, which is C, right? So if I take from A till the ground, which is point C, I've got initial velocity, that's zero. The final velocity when it gets to the ground is unknown. Gravitational acceleration still positive 9.8. And the time, in this case, note that's going to be the time t plus the two seconds. So that is going to be t plus two, okay? And displacement in this case will be uh, in fact, sorry, displacement will be h plus 8h, and that will give me a total of 9h. Okay, right, so let's find another expression. Uh, I'm going to use the very same equation, right? So if I say delta y, that's vi delta t plus 1 over 2a 
delta t squared. So that is going to be 9h. Initial velocity is 0. So that makes this 0 plus a half times 9.8 delta t plus 2. Right, that's the time squared. So you've got 9h is equal to, again, 4.9 times t plus 2 all squared. Now remember, we already know an expression for h, so we might as well just substitute that there. So that's going to be 9 multiplied by, our h is 4.9 times t squared. This is going to be 4.9 into t plus 2 all squared. Now if I divide both sides by 4.9, ladies and gents, right, that cancels with that. I do the same on the left-hand side, those two cancel. And so I've got 9t squared is equal to t plus 2 all squared. And what we can do is just take the square root on both sides. Now usually when, the, when we take the square root, we, uh, we'll say plus or minus, but because time can never be negative, I'm simply going to have the positive square root. So this is going to be 3t is equal to t plus 2. And so if I take this to the other side, 3t minus t will give me 2t, which is equal to 2, and divide both sides by 2. We've got t is equal to 1 second. Shoo, this question had hence, right? I hope that you understood that. So we proved that the time that it took, right, that is time t between a and b, was definitely one second. All right, now let's go into the next question. They say to us, uh, using equations of motion only, calculate the speed with which the ball reached point C. So what I'm going to do, I, own, I found out actually, um, in this case, what is uh, the time that it took between A and C. That will be the one second plus the two seconds, right? So that means it took a total of three seconds. I'm looking for the final velocity there. Uh, if you don't mind, I am going to just use an equation. So I've got initial velocity. Uh, I am looking for the final velocity. Uh, and what I could also do, ladies and gents, is that I could also find the height h, right? So between a and c, I now know that the time that it took was three seconds, right? And I am looking, in this case, for the speed v. In fact, let's not even waste our time. So we're going to use the first equation, vf is equals to vi plus g delta t, right? Our final velocity would be zero plus 9.8, positive 9.8 multiplied by three seconds, right? So that would give us 3 times 9.8, and that gives us 29.4. So that's 29.4 meters per second. Okay, so that is our velocity at point C. And then finally, uh, let's go to the, so we found out using equations of motion now. They say determine the height Okay, in fact, they, they didn't specify uh, uh, for us to use equations of motion. They said determine the height from which the ball was dropped. Now, remember, we already had an expression for the height. And what was that expression? Okay, I'm going to remove some stuff over here. We knew that h, height h, is equal to 4.9 times t squared, right? And we knew that t is actually equal to 1. So that's 4.9 multiplied by 1 squared. And that would simply give us 4.9 meters. And that's the height uh, they said from which the ball was dropped. Uh, in fact, let's do this. We found out h is 4.9. And so uh, that is simply going to be... Um, yeah, from which the height was dropped. So this is the height from the ground, above the ground, right? So remember, above the ground, this thing had a height of 9h. That's h plus 8h. And so that means that it will be 
9, so that's the height, will be equal to 9 multiplied by 4.9, and that will give me uh, 9 times 4.9, that gives me 44.1 meters. Okay, right, that is the height from uh, above the ground, from where the ball was dropped. And then they say to us, uh, the height of the ball at point B. So how far is point B? It's 8H. So we can say that the height from B would be 8 multiplied by 4.9. Or you can say it's 44.1 minus the 4.9. Uh, that will give us the same value. So that would be 8 times 4.9. Another 4.9. And I get 39.2 meters. Okay. And then finally, ladies and gents, they say to us, we need to sketch a position versus time graph. Okay. So remember, this is 39.2. Okay. Um, they say we need to sketch a position versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the moment the ball was dropped until it reached point C. Right, so what I'm going to do, ladies and gents, I'm going to draw this position versus time graph. So this is time in seconds. Remember to label your graph. This is position in meters. And what we're going to do, when we were at time zero, we started at a, velocity, uh, at a position rather of 44.1 meters above the ground. And what happened to our ball? It dropped all the way down and I know that when we were at a height of uh, 39.2 okay this was one second after the ball was dropped and in this case I know that it will reach the ground at a height of I mean at a time of three seconds so that's how I will actually look at it Right, this is at the position A, at the position B, and at the position C. Now, of course, um, this drawing is with the assumption that I've taken upwards as positive. If you wanted to maintain downwards as positive, what your graph is simply going to look like, it's just going to be re a reflection of itself around the time axis. So this is what your graph would look like. That would be minus 44.1, that would be minus 39.2, and you'll have zero over there. And this would be our time, one second, and this would be three seconds. All right, that's position against time. So that is how the cookie crumbles in this question, ladies and gents, as we are going to be moving to question four. I'll see you guys again next time. Look out for the next question.